Hi, this is Panther Luca. Welcome to DP2 Insights. In this video, we're going to take a quick tour through the auto balance preferences uh, as a way to help you understand how these may be applied in your lab's color correction workflows. So we're going to go to categories, analyzing, and I'm going to start at the auto balance batch window as just a reminder that the digital scene balance algorithm or auto balance is uh, a way of automating color correction for digital images in DP2 and those it's designed for images such as candids, uh, weddings, sports, family, other types of events that are more prone to having exposure um, problems or being a little under a little overexposed. Uh, just as a quick reminder about the auto-balance batch window, you can create and load setups to uh, help streamline your workflow. But what I really want to talk about in this video uh, briefly is these series of preferences. The scene uh, balance algorithm, the digital one, just like the film one, is designed to uh, analyze the color, overall color, of an image and make density red, green, and blue corrections. So these are the default that we've included in DP2, and this is version 16, but these have, defaults have not changed in quite some time. The system default is this first one, and if you want to change it, if you create um, settings or preferences for your lab, you can simply go to actions and set that as a system default, and that is system-wide. You'll notice, uh, and I want to point out, that these are preference setups, and those setups include all of these variables that you can see across the auto balance preferences table. There are some of these preferences that, as a lab, you can manipulate or modify to try to get a bit of result. These are, were obviously, they were created um, using test images, so um, what I'd recommend is that as a lab you put together groups of test images where you can go through and test what each one of these preferences is going to do um, based on the color and the exposure challenge that you're facing. The types of things that you can change are things like the film preference adjustment for color. This is red, green, and blue. Uh, minor adjustments uh, may actually net uh, a pretty good result. If you were to increase or decrease these, you may also be making uh, density, right? So a lot of color change may result in a darker image and less may result in a lighter image and so on. The other things that you can change are the unders and overs, right? Um, and that is so that you can help DP2 and the algorithm understand what range you're trying to incorporate. You can see here that each one of these within um, the color range, right, red, green, and blue. This is under and overs, which is consistent really with the type of language that you might have seen in the film world. The SBA color matrix multiplier, or CMM, uh, has a range from 0 to 1,000. 1,000 being 100% correction is being made, 0 would be no correction. Um, they are all set by default to 1,000, which is what we recommend, but you may find in your lab that there are images that, or bodies, you know, groups of images that a little less correction might take you a long way. The other change that you can make is if you have um, a um, an SFS table, which is the subject failure suppression, which is really the boundary table. Um, and what that has six sets of boundaries, hue, saturation, ending hue, um, and a chromatic correction. The SFS table, and I'm going to show you the film version of this because in DP2 I happen to have it available to me in the film term editor. This is what we used to call the Woody Woodpecker, which is really shows you that color range. Um, and this table defines the boundaries of that color range. If you have access or have uh, tools that will allow you to, or you have been provided by one, uh, by the color scientists at Kodak, this is where you would change it and you would simply navigate to wherever that um, table resides in DP2. 
usually in the KPDP2 folder. And to do that, all you would really, I'm going to duplicate this one in this case, right? So there I have a set of duplicate values. You can make whatever changes you need to do. I would recommend renaming this. The DP2 is not going to allow you to have two with the same name anyway. But this way you'll keep those original um, preferences intact. And while you're making changes to this, disable it. You can go ahead and perhaps we'll make this, um, we'll just change these values. And you can use the arrows. I'm going to go ahead and save that change and then enable it. Once I've saved those changes and enabled them, when I go back into the Auto Balance Batch window, that preference then becomes available to me to use both in Adjust Images and the Auto Balance Batch window. Thank you.